Hey, what kind of business do you reckon this is? It's got a cafe that's not open to everyone. The cafe's got beer taps. It has weekly gatherings of up to 30 people. And you can't be a client if you can't use an iPad. No idea? It's an accounting firm. And it's a very disruptive one at that. Well, I say, welcome to a small business marketing show. Where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Tim Bo Reed. You, right there are a motivated business owner. You are out there trying to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. If that is the case, you've come to the right place because that's what we do around here. We help you overcome your fear of marketing. And if you don't have one, we help you take your marketing to the next level. That's exactly what we do around here. If you're new, welcome. If you're old, welcome. Love your work. Big show today, joined by Ben Walker, a 26-year-old CPA, that's Chartered Practicing Accountant, that's seriously disrupting the accounting industry. Yeah, great story. And a uh, It is overflowing with marketing lessons. I also help a listener out with some ideas to show their customers just how much they care. And I've got a motivational marketing quote all about caring for your customers. Funny that. Hey, uh, today's show lovingly brought to you by the very good folk at Key Person of Influence. That's the world's leading business accelerator program. If you are wanting to become an industry thought leader. Why wouldn't you? And to expedite that process, grab a free copy, a hard copy of their book over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. It is an absolute ripper. They will post it to you in the snail mail. This episode is also brought to you by the good folk at Audible, and you can get a free audio book of your choice from 180,000 titles. Yeah, yeah, 180,000 over at audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. I'm actually listening to Boy George's autobiography at the moment. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm stuck in the 80s, but that's life. Get over it. I love the 80s. As per usual, this is a rather large show, and there is marketing G O L D dripping from the ceiling over here at the Small Business Big Marketing HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Join the Small Business Big Marketing community and have your marketing questions answered by other motivated business owners, including Timbo, over at crankmymarketing.com. Righto, I am going to launch into today's fireside chat. Now, it is with a wonderful fellow who was brought to my attention by a listener. Let me read the email that I received from Brett Johnson. And Brett, thank you for this, mate, because uh, you've, um, you, you've enabled a great interview. Brett says, hey, Timbo, loving your podcast. As a business consultant, it's given me loads of great ideas and thanks for what you do. Truly inspiring. Brett, my pleasure. Your podcast has opened my eyes much more to the world of online marketing and marketing in general and made me aware of some really good businesses out there. One such business is Inspire CA. This accounting firm was founded by a young fellow by the name of Ben Walker. I don't know him personally, but I think you would find his marketing is pretty awesome. You're right there, and you may wish to interview him. Well, I did hit Ben up, and that's who you're about to hear. Brett goes on to say, to begin with, his offices in Inner Brisbane include a purpose-built cafe called Inspire Cafe, complete with business meeting rooms and other things. His business is built on vision and purpose, and he's doing events with guest speakers out of his cafe. He's got video marketing going on, opt-in gifts, lead pages, email marketing, and lots of other great stuff. Uh, Brett, love it. Thank you, buddy. So I made contact with Ben. Sure enough, Ben's a listener of the show. Love that. Love that. So here he is. And I started off by asking Ben what is on his bucket list. Uh Okay, so I, uh, I saw yesterday a video on Facebook of um, two two guys flying in like jetpacks beside yeah. a massive Boeing thing. A380. Over. That's it. Yep, over Dubai. Um, I am so petrified of heights. That's something I'd probably want to do, which would possibly be the end to my bucket list. Uh, but yeah, 
Mate, that, yeah. I, I, I saw that video a few days ago. I think that's one of the most extraordinary videos I've seen. I mean... Oh, they're insane. That is... I mean, the, the whole marketing of Dubai is brilliant, um, but that's a great example of when uh, the marketing budget is unlimited, which clearly <laughs> it is over there. But, you know, wow, those guys, jetpacks flying alongside an A380 over the city of Dubai. Like, all I was thinking was, was how aren't they getting sucked into the jet engine? Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was a bit of a stunt, a bit of a green screen. Oh, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think so. They'd get found uh, out pretty quickly if they did. But, um, yeah, okay, scared of heights, challenging. Yeah. Do, do you, do you, you're an accountant. Do you leap out of your comfort zone very often or do you stay in the comfort of your comfort zone? Yeah, no, I try to push myself to the edge, um, especially that, that that sort of stuff. Like um, a few years ago I started rock climbing and, yeah, seriously, like five metres and just sweating. Wow. <laughs> I guess with your business, with Inspire CA, you've taken yourself and you've, you've taken your industry out of the comfort zone. So that's what we're here to talk about. I, mm. I want to first talk about, before we talk about how you've created a wow factor in your marketing, Ben, you say that Inspire CA's purpose is to help young families use their small business to achieve big goals, which I yeah. love because it's it's a very neat little niche. Um, why did you arrive at that niche and how strictly have you stuck to it? Yeah, great question. And uh, I might I might answer it in sort of reverse, but basically I started out, um, yeah, and I, I believe clients are a reflection of who you are as a person. Um, and so when I started out, I had this entrepreneurial hat on and, you know, I was I, I considered myself an entrepreneur and, you know, taking big big risks and steps and that sort of thing. Uh, and, and my marketing was all focused on that. So using that E word. Um, then as life got on, so, oh, I mean, I'm only three years into the business, but uh, recently married and, and starting a, a small family of my own. Mm. Um, my sister, who started working for me in month number two of the business, um, mm. you know, she's now started a small family, a young family of a, a um, as well, uh, and she's moved into a more CFO role in the business. So, uh, massive focus on on family, uh, and when we. Uh, looked into our client base, uh, the clients that we loved working with, we had tons of rapport with, you know, were tech savvy, uh, easy to get along with, were all young family, small business. You know, they had one or two bubs or, you know, newborn, mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting little to no sleep. <laughs> yeah, right. And, yeah. So uh, you sort of re-engineered it. Like you actually didn't, because you were with KPMG, you escaped the cubicle, you didn't yeah. escape the cubicle going, I'm going to start an accounting practice that uh, uh, solves the problems of young families with small businesses to achieve big goals. But uh, you kind of attracted, you, you attracted people like yourself, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely when I started out, yeah. Um, and and in terms of the, the family focus, that's been a, uh, I guess, a recent pivot, probably in the last uh, six to Six to six or so months, mm -hmm. and yeah, based on just a, a bit of a review, a bit of a, a stock take of where we're at, and um, yeah, I think it's just it's just being authentic to who we are. Interesting. So, does that mean you say no to the crusty old forty-eight-year-old bloke? like you're talking to, <laughs> um, <laughs> who, who, you know, has a much older family and maybe, well, and, and works in corporate. Are you going to say no to someone like that? Uh, yeah. So, um, so what we, who we love working with is people who are, you know, owner managers, people running their own business um, and, mm. and um, you know, not, not necessarily a corporate sort of um, business and um, yeah, we do say no to people who you know can't use an iPad or <laughs> cool. <laughs> just just we we, we grind um, in terms of a, a tech technology or the way we deal with our clients. Uh, it's just a recipe for disaster if people can't um, you know type an email or uh, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> it, it seems seems basic, but wow, yeah. But uh, but I think too looking at the marketing, looking at your, looking at your websites and videos. Um, you may you're probably not having to say no face to face often because people are self selecting. Yes, absolutely. That's a big big lesson I learned very early on. So what? Like people are like the 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 way you create your marketing messages will determine who phones you, who calls you, who who says, "Hey, will you be my accountant?" Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And if they don't self-select or, <laughs> or sort, sort themselves out, uh, what we've developed in our sales process is a bit of a, you know, a bit of a filter. Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're not for everyone, um, you know, as, as I just mentioned. But, um, mm. yeah, step one of the sales process is testing, hey, do we both want to work with each other? Love it. Tell me more about that because you could quite – the abrupt version, Ben, would be um, if someone does call you that is just not appropriate, you could actually say to them, hey, listen, what part of our marketing didn't you get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not, not, definitely not that one. Uh, <laughs> so what's, but, the, uh, what's it look like then? Yeah, yeah. So if we oh, – I mean, there was a, a big organisation, you know, sort of 50 mil plus or I can't even remember who they were, but um, mm. probably about a year ago they rang up and they were looking for help with accounting. Uh, and, yeah, just, just asked a few questions about the size of the business and I said, look, we're not for you, but here's a couple of firms that you might want to check out. Love it. Um, so, yeah, just shot them to someone else. <laughs> I love that saying, um, identifying a niche an inch wide and a mile deep because yeah. I, I think – I think a lot of, and there'll be listeners tuning in right now who be going like, yeah, but what about saying no and leaving money on the table and, you know, like it's so hard. But I, I'm not sure that that's the case because I think what you say no to determines what you say yes to. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Absolutely. And, and um, good uh, bad clients drive out good clients is another uh, takeaway from a book called uh, Implementing Value Pricing. Mate, we could just go, we could go quote for quote now for the rest of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I love it. But that's great. I mean, it's, it is, it's, it, I think it takes courage to own a niche and you've clearly, you found that courage and by creating marketing that Kind of, kind of says, well, this is who we stand for. This is the type of people we are and want to work with, then it's good. Do, do you have a – when then someone does call and you go, well, I think we, you, you are a potential client, um, do you have mm. a sort of discovery session that allows you both to, to suss each other out? Absolutely, and, um, and and we call that a, a look under the hood. So just like just like a mechanic would, um, you know, would look under the hood of your car, um, we have a quick look under your um, under the, the hood of your business. And what that means is just you know reviewing your what happened last year and giving you a second opinion on what we think um, you know could be done better. Or mm-hmm. we'll say, hang on. That hood looks great. Stay where you are. That's you know they're doing a great job. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's a, a bit of a, a way where we can learn a bit about the business, and um, we also take uh, prospects through our alignment questionnaire, and that's where I've actually recorded a two to three minute video of me explaining the sort of values and why uh, Inspire exists, uh, and also asks I think it's about fifteen questions. Um, so we spend. A, the, the first couple of questions on the normal, you know, um, how long have you been in business? Uh, do you do your own bookkeeping? All that sort of normal stuff. Uh, and then we shift to future mode where we ask questions like, where do you want to be in 10 years? You know, what, um, what profit do you want? Um, and, and are you in your business to sell it or to create a lifestyle business? Or, you know, what are you looking to do? And the feedback we get is those questions there, uh, no one or very little people have asked them and mm. especially not accountants. So accountants are definitely not asking those sort of questions. Isn't that extraordinary? Again, I mean, that's not rocket science there. That's just asking some valid questions to help both sides understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Let's talk about that, look, what other accountants are doing because I, I saw a quote from you which said, you know, you started Inspire CA to head in the opposite direction to the traditional old way of the accounting industry and poor old accounts you, you I mean you blokes get bashed up don't you because it's like I, I go to a lot of mar- conferences and you know marketing and various other uh, topics are discussed around business and whenever someone wants to reference boring it's the accountant ex- accountant's example you know it's like yeah which is pretty unfair you're clearly challenging that what's your industry doing wrong that allowed you to see the opportunity yeah, um, well, it's it's a it's an awesome opportunity because I think it's some something that um, you know there's two types of accounting firms I'm seeing at the moment the newer progressive ones and there's a few popping up you know every every couple of weeks um, in Australia and around the world mm-hmm. uh, but then you've got Harry the dinosaur who's been in business <laughs> for twenty thirty years uh, you know and he's just you know oh it's always worked like this and you know yep. we make good profit and you know we don't have to do anything and and what's happening though is that. Um, the the young guns are starting to take the business from underneath them because the clients aren't satisfied with the service they're getting. Um, the two biggest things that we hear when when people are looking for another accountant is 
my accountant doesn't get back to me. It takes me, you know, three or four phone calls to get through and sometimes I don't even get a call back. Um, and, and the other one is, you know, I never hear from him. He's not proactive or her mm-hmm. or, you know, um, basically they, it's just a transactional-based relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, you know, in the last few years, businesses have been a lot more exposed to a choice um, and, and especially with new technology that enables us to, to do our job more efficiently and, and communicate with our clients better. Uh, and that's where Harry the dinosaur is about to be extinct. Well said. And hello to Harry uh, and Harry, Harriet, H- Henrietta, who's also listening. You know, we are living in very changing times and we are seeing all these wonderful opportunities available to any business um, to market themselves. I speak at a lot of conferences, Ben, about this concept of helpful marketing marketing, which basically says, hey, listen, share your knowledge using modern marketing channels and you'll attract the right type of clients, right? And a lot, of, and I speak a lot at financial uh, advisor conferences, accountant conferences, and the crusty old blokes do say, yeah, 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 but it's, you know, the best way to doing business is meeting face-to-face and eyeballing your client. And I absolutely agree with that. But mm-hmm. what we've got is all these new channels that sit alongside the old way, you know, it's not, I, I don't know if it's either or, you know, like it can be, it's just that we've got all these wonderful new opportunities available to us as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and my challenge to anyone who says that is, do you actually pick up the phone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you actually do it or do you sit behind your desk waiting for clients to come in? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. But, but yeah. it, part of the accountant thing too is, I mean, you are the, so many accounts say to me, I don't need marketing. It's all referrals. Just word of mouth and referrals, you know? What do you say to that? Hmm. Um, <laughs> well, we, we don't grow by, especially in the first couple of years, we didn't grow by my referral network. <laughs> um, you I know, I'm, I was... I was 22 when I kicked off the firm. Uh, you know, f- for me to have a, a business network of a, you know, a 40 year old person who's been in business for 20 years, it's just, you know, it's not going to happen. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I had to innovate the yeah, our, our different marketing channels and the way we we presented ourselves digitally and also in person. It, it, yeah. it was a must. And so is that only three is that only three years ago? Uh, yeah, February 2013. So third third birthday is coming up in about two months. <laughs> so months. E24 or 25? Uh, 26 now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, you're a wise head on young shoulders. So um, tell me, I, I want to talk shortly about the wow that, of marketing that you are creating. Just um, we, you left KPMG, you couldn't have been there that long, um, but, you know, a place where you've got loads of resources at your disposal. What have you found most challenging in building Inspire CA? Yeah, so I actually uh, left KPMG after three and a half years of the grind, uh, went to a smaller accounting firm, and the experience I got there was um, I was you know, much more client-facing, and, 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 uh, and what I was exposed to was uh, the benefit and the insight that we can actually give our clients, and that's what gave me the drive to say, hey, wow, we can really help, help people and change people's lives using numbers. I mean, it's... Mm. Um, yeah, it was it was an, an eye opener, really. Yeah, right. Yeah, nice. Be would have been a a, a refreshing change to uh, to <laughs> get out of that. Hey, team, I'm chatting with Ben Walker of Inspire CA, a small business that's shaking up the accounting industry. Before we delve into how Ben's creating a serious wow factor that's separating him from the pack, here's a word from a wonderful business that can lighten your marketing load. <laughs> Support for this show comes from Key Person of Influence, a structured business accelerator program for those keen to be an industry thought leader. Recently, I asked co-founder Glenn Carlson what led him to starting KPI. 78% of Australian businesses have less than four employees and they're in the service space. So doctors, lawyers, financial planners, personal trainers, physiotherapists, and there was nothing really structured to look after those people and help them accelerate through their entrepreneurial journey. Journey. And, and we have a very strong and have always had a very strong affinity with those sorts of business owners because we are those sorts of business owners and that's what the Key Person of Influence program is designed to, uh, to help people do. Key Person of Influence, taking you from good to seriously great. For a free hard copy of their Amazon bestseller, visit keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. 
Now, Ben, uh, let's talk wow marketing. You do a few yeah. things in an Inspire CA. How do you go about creating some wow in your marketing? Yeah, uh, I think really I, I can't owe uh, any any piece of or, or any any result to one channel in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, years and years ago, I started even you know even before the, I'd actually launched. I was writing content for the website uh, and mm-hmm. and loved content marketing, loved copywriting, um, and, and that sort of thing. So grow that, but gr- grew that, but then I added on things as I learned. You know, I was following what people were doing outside of the accounting industry, like inter- internet marketers, for instance. Um, you know, then I'd add on webinars and add on, you know, when we moved into our space here in, in Newstead, we ran physical events. Um, well, tell us about that space. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what have you got? You are holding something back. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> well. You've got a cafe. We do, with beer taps. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So when we moved, which was about nine nine months into into business, we needed a, a new space. Um, the team had grown from just me to, to four people, and uh, I, I actually put a couple of different options forward to a, a mentor, uh, Paul Dunn, um, who, who's chairman of uh, Global Giving Initiative B One G One, and I said, Paul, we need a, we need a new property. What do you think of these three? And he said, No, nah, neither. Well, none of them. <laughs> Uh, um, I, I believe the accounting office um, has been too stale and old for so long. I reckon you should put a cafe in, <laughs> and so we did. I uh, I didn't think about it long enough to to work out whether it was a good idea. I just did it. And, and it's I mean, looking at pictures of it and the video of it. I mean, we're not just talking like a little counter with a coffee machine. I mean, do you want to explain it to listeners? Yeah, it's uh, basically a 200 square metre facility where uh, people can come in and hire a meeting room. Mm. Uh, you know, you can grab a beer from the bar, and um, basically, it's here to serve our clients, but also the business community to you know meet people and, and run their own training or workshops. Um, you know, run run a meeting, interview there. I mean, we get a lot of people from interstate um, spending the day or a couple of days in a week here. Wow, with back to back interviews and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, um, and if you search for meeting room hire Brisbane in Google, I, uh, I put a lot of work into SEO. Love it. Um, well, it's got its own. Um, it's got its own website, InspireCafe. Yeah. dot com. That's it. Yeah. And um, is it just for clients, or is it is it for anyone? Uh, no, no. Originally, it started where we were open to the public, uh, but we've made it a little bit more exclusive recently. But still, business owners can can hire a room, or you know, the business community in Brisbane and, and around the. Um, actually, we had someone in the states a few months ago yeah. uh, book a room. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, so businesses can hire it. Um, not really applicable for walk in customers or people who you know um, just you know, don't want that business yeah, yeah, element. Right. So what, it wasn't a cheap uh, thing to put a cafe into your offices. If it, what kind of return have you got? Can you actually actively say, yep, we have got uh, 10 new clients out of it worth 50 grand a year? Or like, how do you measure the success of that? Yeah, um, and, and that's, that's a question I've been asked a couple of times. I, I wasn't aware how much it was going to cost and the amount of time, effort, energy and, and stress. <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, but wow, uh, it's to the point where... I don't believe if I didn't do that, um, it, none of the you know PR and all sorts of things that have come from it. Yes. Um, so, so I reckon I do not have another point of reference. Um, I'm, I'm here where I am because of it, mm-hmm. um, and because of the the snowball effect that it's it's happened. Even though it was a bit of a thorn in my side for quite a while. Yeah. Well, were there, were there times because the accountant in you's just got to be counting those beans and going. This is not adding up. Yeah, absolutely, and that's uh, that's why we did have to, to make a couple of changes along the way. And you know, it didn't. It's it, what it is now isn't re, isn't exactly how we um, how we started it, mm-hmm. but the vision remained the same, and we're achieving the exact thing uh, that we set out to achieve, which was to build a community where uh, business owners and entrepreneurs can actually meet and 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 do business with each other, uh, have a coffee, grab a beer, and yeah, just just chill out. Well, it kind of addresses that whole thing. You know, we, we live a lot in the online world, but, you know, the idea of building a tribe, face-to-face meetings, mm. kind of connecting, you know, in a human way. Sounds weird to even say that, but it's missing and you're addressing that and it's working for you. And mm-hmm. it also gives you a place to put on events. Is that right? Do you do regular events? 
Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we've got an event every week leading up to Christmas and we've done so since uh, the 31st of July this year. Wow. Uh, before that, we had run uh, less frequent events. Uh, but basically, yeah, we, we get a speaker in. Every, um, sorry, every week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Benny, absolutely. Benny, you are on fire, mate. Tell me about that because bums on seats <laughs> is not easy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and the great thing is I haven't had too much to do with the organisation and the logistics around mm. it, which is fantastic. Uh, but we've got an amazing team who, who pull it together every single week. Um, and I think we ran the numbers. Uh, we've had our 15th one uh, last Friday, and I think we've got well over 300 people, unique people who have been through the doors since the 31st of July when we started, where there was four people present. <laughs> and good on you for persevering. Uh, many would have stopped. I mean, you would have, could have easily gone around oh, four, really? Not worth it. Yep. Next next idea. Yeah, that's it. And we set out right at the start saying, all right, we've got to commit to this for a certain amount of time, and that was uh, that was to Christmas. Uh, and every single week, and we had speakers coming out of the woodwork who were keen to share their message. Yeah, right. Um, and, and, yeah, it's it's been fantastic. You know, they're 15-minute TED-style talks uh, where, where people are sharing ideas and, and that sort of thing related to their expertise. So, yeah, okay, and what, what's the average number now? Like 10, 15 people on a, on a Friday afternoon? Uh, more so, about 30. Wow. <laughs> well done. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So you've got 30 people Friday afternoons. You're pulling a different speaker each week. I'm a speaker, Ben. Are you paying? <laughs> Is everyone doing it for free? Uh, at the moment, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for free, oh, you're killing me, you're killing me. I get it, there's people who want to share their messages for free. Uh, so a different speaker each week, uh, 15 minutes, um, and then the rest is networking, socialising, um, easing into the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a nice tra- trans, uh, translation through to, uh, you know, busy Friday, through to, uh, you know, going and taking the kids to sport on a Saturday. Are you recording, that's content that you're creating, are you recording every single one of those presentations and putting it on your YouTube channel or something? We sure are. <laughs> so we're creating a bit of a content bank there, yep. um, sharing that out with our audience um, each Monday. So people who, sh- who show up are getting mm-hmm. the, the video sent to them of the recording. Oh, mate. Um, that's something that we're actually not sharing with the whole audience, um, given given the, the nature of it. Why? Uh, and we want, want a bit Why? of exclusive. Sorry? Why? Uh, great question. Uh, at the moment, a bit of exclusivity with, you know, sharing it with people who, who rock up and a bit of a thank you, hey, here's your video, share it with who you'd like. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, just to incentivise people to come along. I, I would have thought the, uh, the exclusivity would have been in turning up on the Friday, whereas now, I mean, that's, that's the special part. I don't know. That's me. I'd be sharing it far and wide. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, I think we do have a bit of a strategy to do that in the new year. You know, in an interesting. All point. right, so you're breaking some rules. You've got a cafe. You've got beer taps. You've got weekly events. Um, any other wow kind of marketing uh, that you're doing? Yeah, uh, I think it's it's not wow in general, but it's wow for accountants. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Harvey, my business partner, and I, we. Um, we, we trialled a webinar at, uh, based on feedback given the young family audience um, at 8pm on a, on a weeknight. Um, so we'd both just had massive days and here we are yeah. rocking up to a, a, a webinar on cash flow and goodness me, we put on a face for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so we're adding in, uh, in webinars to the, to the mix as well. Yep. Yeah, so there's a whole like educa- educating clients um, content strategy as well. Yeah, 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 massive lovely. focus. And I almost forgot one yeah. of our biggest <laughs> yeah. biggest ways is actually uh, through our um, online Facebook group. Um, so we've created a, a closed group um, where I think we've got over 200 people in there now, um, mm-hmm. clients, prospective clients, um, you know, referral partners um, and, and people with a similar market uh, where we're just creating this you know, community of young family small business owners that just help each other. I mean, we, we run open days as well physically in the office Mm -hmm. and people walk away from that saying wow that was a 10 grand day to me in sales like you know people people are getting value from each other and we're we're keeping it in the family Mm -hmm. that's a brilliant idea um is there any reason you do it on facebook just because it's easy and free or would you think about creating more of a forum inside of you know hanging off the inspire ca website so that you own that forever and a day 
Uh, p- potentially, um, mm. we're going to make a few decisions. I think over Christmas on the on the future of it. Uh, but why Facebook initially is that uh, we found that it's one less thing to log into uh, for yeah. our for our clients, um, and it's a way where we can still be uh, fairly present with our our audience and our community. Yeah. And, and really personal, like a, a real connection to them, given, you know, most people keep Facebook for, um, you know, for personal use and, and a little bit of business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's sort of changing too, isn't it? Um, mm. b- b- ridiculous question next just to finish off, Ben, but uh, I'm sure you have an answer for it because you're a very considered young man. Um, <laughs> Ten years' time, mate, where's Inspire CA going to be? Where do you want it to be? Wow. Uh, <laughs> Come on, tell me um, you've thought about it. Tell me you've thought about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we want to be educating the small business of of Australia, and the reason for that is um, small business in Australia is is a significant driver of the economy. Um, I, I don't know the exact stats, but I think it's like fifty percent of employment, um, and and that's crazy. And and you know, as business owners, it's not easy running, starting or running a business, and we want to help um, business owners using numbers uh, to become you know, build their businesses in a profitable and, and cash flow effective way so that they're not putting up with the stresses and, and, and the downsides of it anywhere near as much as, as they currently are. Well, good, uh, good on you. I mean, and hopefully that doesn't take you 10 years because I, I, no. I personally believe and part of why I do this show is that I think there's, there's a lack of quality information and by quality, I mean not advertorial in nature, not shallow in nature, but good quality, deep, helpful information out there for, for small business owners in Australia and the rest of the world. But, you know, I, we know the Australian marketplace best. So, yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, like uh, the quicker you can do that and you are doing it in Brizzy. You need to sort of expand it out now. You, you probably should get a podcast. Yep, that's on the on the cards. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that, that that goal I just mentioned about twelve to twenty four months. Yeah, not, love not. it, love it. <laughs> you know, like um, with with the marketing because you've got a lot of things on that list by the sounds of it. Everything I've said, you've gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah, that's on the list. Um, are you allocating? Do you personally allocate? Um, time each week to marketing? How do you approach it? Yeah, so uh, I, I, I do love marketing. Uh, when I started the business, you know, operationally, I just helped someone else set up their own accounting firm. Um, so ops were, especially, you know, accounting firm ops were second nature. Um, but marketing, is it was a real love and, and that's what I've devoted last couple of years of my life learning yeah. is, uh, you know, forget about accounting, let's just learn this marketing thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I personally love it, um, but I we, we are building a marketing team here uh, to help with the implementation. For every accountant, we've got a part-time marketing helper. So um, it's it's really shared the load quite wow. a lot. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. Well, good on you. So what a part-time marketing helper, uh, what's part-time and, and what what are they doing? Yeah, so um, so we partnered with uh, actually we, we partnered with uh, both Queensland major universities QUT and UQ. But basically, we've got um, students who are interested in accounting, um, working one to two days a week, um, and they're either owning Facebook or the the meetups that we run, or um, you know the, the website and that side of things, or video as well. Um, so each person is owning one one element of that, oh, and um, and we're feeding the strategy to them. <laughs> You have so you've gone to the uni uh, to the accounting, not the marketing area, yeah. Oh no, no, to definitely marketing. Oh, sorry, you said, <laughs> okay, brilliant, and uh, well, that's a fantastic thing. And they are just given a responsibility that those guys are going to get some great experience, and um, yeah. yeah, good for you too. Uh, do you outsource anything overseas, or is it all you know kept in house? No, no, we do um, no, nothing overseas, uh, but we do outsource to a local uh, marketing strategist um, who basically uh, runs their eyes over everything we do um, and, and touches it up, which Love is um, which is fantastic and super valuable. Ben, uh, great conversation, mate. I love it. I love what you've done in three years. I love the fact that you're disrupting an industry that needs disrupting and I love the fact that you respect marketing so much. So uh, well done to you and uh, I'm guessing you're on Twitter and if you are, I'd love listeners to hit you up and tell you how good you are. What's your Twitter ID? Yeah, that's uh, Ben Walker CA. Ah, uh, clever. Hey, thanks, Ben. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tim. Cheers. <laughs> Hey, what'd you think of that, team? What a good guy. 
What a, a wise head on young shoulders. Is that what you say? Something like that. That was cafe owner and uh, chartered practicing accountant, Ben Walker. He is from Inspire CA. And I want to share my top three learnings from that fireside chat. I'm sure you have many more, but here are my top three. Thanks to the good guys at keypersonofinfluence.com uh, forward slash Timbo. Go to that link, grab their free book. They will post you a hard copy of their book because quite interesting, whilst Ben hasn't done the Key Person of Influence program, I would argue quite strongly that he is a key person of influence in his niche because of what he's, in, what he's doing in regards to his marketing. Here's my top three. Number one, don't be afraid to focus your efforts on attracting a very specific type of client. I love what Ben said, your clients reflect who you are as a person. Hey, that's interesting. (laughs) That gets you thinking. So put a stake in the ground and own that niche that's an inch wide and a mile deep. Learning number two, ask yourself this, what could you add to your business that your clients would value? Ben's added a cafe I'm not suggesting you go and do that, but what could you add? What physical thing could you add to your business that your clients would value and think you are just ace? Love the word ace. Learning number three, I love Ben's look under the hood process. I think it's a great way to determine if a client is right for you and if you're right for them. Um, I call them discovery calls. I do them with my coaching where you talk to the, the prospect first just to see, you know, can I help you? And, you know, am I right for you? You right for me. I think it's a great thing. Hey, what did you learn? They're my top three thanks to Key Person of Influence. What did you learn? Head over to the show notes. Small business, big marketing, dot com. Search box on the right hand side. Look for episode 281 and leave me a comment. Damon Richards once said, your customer doesn't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So care one hell of a lot. Now, I have got a wonderful question from a listener. Now, if you have listened to the last couple of episodes, you know that I am now asking that you head over to iTunes, click on listener review, for my podcast, The Small Business Big Marketing Show, leave a review, but leave a question at the same time. And guess what? I might just answer it. I encourage you to do that. So leave the question. Also leave your website address and I'll give you a little bit of a promotion because you left me a listener review and asked me a question. This one is from Estelle. She says, and thank you for the five stars rating, by the way, Estelle. She says, Timbo, you're a legend. Oh, stop it. Stop it. I'm blushing. She says, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Well, I intend to. I'm, I'm not going anywhere just yet. Kind of like this shtick. Uh, your content is so relevant, insightful, and useful. Thank you, Timbo. My marketing question is this. I'm interested to know from a customer's perspective what the little 1% extra is translated to. Yeah, I talk about a lot of going that it's the extra 1% makes all the difference. Here's some background, Timbo. We own an excavation and earth moving company. We specialise in rural driveway installations. Okay, got that. From our experience, people are focused on value for money. Yeah, everyone is. I.e. they don't like any extra fluff that they think will be a cost added to their bill. Yeah, 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 okay, fair enough. I still think they would like a little bit of extra added fluff if put a smile on their dial. She goes on to say, what are some small things we can implement in our business to show people we really care? And that will get them to tell their friends about us. Sincerely, Estelle Ward from gunprofiling.com.au. That's the name of their business, which is an unusual name because they do driveway installations. Now, Estelle, it's a great question. I'm going to give you six things to do. Number one, do what you say you'll do. Arrive on time, finish on time, do a ripper job, stick to budget, That's good. That's kind of expected, isn't it? But still, many don't. Number two, follow up with a phone call seven days after the job's complete. How's it going? How's your driveway? Do you love it? Is there anything else we forgot to do? You know, show that you care and that they're not just a transaction. 
Because when you show that a client that they're more than a transaction, you go from being a transactional business to a transformational business. Number three idea, do a one pager on keeping your driveway clean. Little kind of tips and tricks. I don't know whether you're installing asphalt, concrete driveways, brick driveways, or kind of, you know, country road type driveways. But anyway, give them um, some tips on how to keep it clean. A little one pager or a video. Tip number four, a 12-month service visit, Estelle. Go back in 12 months' time and see how things are going. Maybe give it a clean, hey? Give it a bit of a tickle. Give that driveway a, just a bit of a zhuzh. Um, that, and, and you never know, business may come from that. Number five, a box of beer on ice on completion. I think your uh, Estelle's business is up in the, the in north of Australia, in Darwin. It's hot up there. A box of beer on ice at the very end of the job. Put it on a – wrap it in a bow. Put it at the end of the driveway. They'll love that. Number six, send a card. For, this is a bit wacky, this one. Stick with me. So this card is going to come from your client's car, right? And it's thanking them for the new driveway because the car loves it so much. It's so smooth and beautiful to drive up and the car gets emotional every time it goes up the driveway. I know, I know. It's a bit wacky, but hey, it might get talked about and shared and that's what you want. So there you go. Love your question, Estelle. I hope you implement some of those ideas. If you do, let us know. Hey, listeners, as I said, head over to iTunes. If you've got a question that you'd love me to answer, you could join the Small Business Big Marketing Forum over at crankmymarketing.com, but you could also leave a review, a listener review in iTunes with a question. I love that so much and I read them all. Love your work. Plenty of marketing gold coming your way in the weeks, months, maybe even years to come. Next time on the Small Business Big Marketing Show, I chat with Maxine Windrum, who started a very successful business because her breasts were too big. Yep, that's right. You heard it. Her breasts were too big. Uh, That's next time on the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Be sure to grab your free hard copy of the Key Person of Influence Amazon bestseller, over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. And warning, warning, don't read it in bed. Trust me on that, you won't sleep. Grab a free audio copy of your book of choice over at audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. This show sounds amazing due to the audio genius that is Daryl Misson. My music bed is written, played and sung by rock star Mr. Lockie Dolly. Thank you, Lock. And if you want your marketing questions answered immediately, then join the forum over at crankmymarketing.com. And if you want me to speak at your conference, timreed.com.au. I'm all yours. Until next time, may your marketing be the absolute best marketing. Bye for now.